Jesus Christ. Amen. Dios les bendiga. Let's go bless in Spanish. Do we have any people that speak Spanish here? No. Marvel. If you never said enough people that speak Spanish, I never would be preaching Spanish. But since we don't have enough people that speak Spanish, I'm going to preach in English to you. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Kim, for organizing all this, the trip over there to uh, West Virginia. Like my wife said, everything was gone. We were packing stuff at the end, just put everything it's in bags, and just people just coming and grab the bags because it was time for them to leave for us to go. So, we're uh, very thankful for all the donations uh, that the Lord brought to us over there. Uh, I don't want to uh, come out of this church uh, owing money to you guys. May I move these pretty flowers a little bit? Because I thought with my hands a lot, and I don't want to go like this, and it starts flying over the place. I'll praise the Lord, and then I end up with a bill before I leave this building. So, <laughs> praise God. Yeah. Him and I, we have a bill over there. He's gonna tell me to lower down if I get too loud because I have a loud mouth. So just, uh, I'm, I'm a, 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 excuse me in advance for being too loud. I told him maybe we leave the, the sound off and I just use my voice to praise God. So blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's, let's start because I understand we have a few minutes. Uh, if you have your King James Bible, open your King James Bible in the book of Luke chapter 13, book of Luke chapter 13, we're going to start right there, let me know when you have your Bibles ready, on the book of Luke chapter 13, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I came into this country September 5th, 1995 from Mexico City to Washington DC, and one of the things that I'm thankful to the American people is the gift of salvation, the gift of salvation, that nobody can take away from me, uh, the gift of salvation. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You already have your Bible ready? Luke 13, verse 23 and 24. I already prayed for this message. Uh, the title of the message this morning is Sad Sinners Guide to Go to Hell. Luke 13, is, verse 23 says, They say unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter into the straight gate. For many, for many, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter into this door and shall not be able to enter. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right there, Jesus Christ is having a conversation with his disciples, with the multitude, with the people that's hearing Jesus Christ preach. And somebody comes to him and asks him a question, and he says, Lord, how many are they going to be saved? Is there a lot of people that are going to be saved? Is there many that are going to enter into your kingdom? Or is just few? And the Lord Jesus Christ, on verse 24, he answered the question and said, Lord, work hard to enter into the narrow door because many, because many will try and shall not be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible talks about few people that are going to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It also talks about a door. There is the door to enter into the kingdom of heaven and it's very narrow, very straight, very small and only few will enter. Matthew 7 verse 21 also talks about many he said, many, many on that day will say unto me, Lord, Lord, did we not sing in the church? Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? Lord, Lord, did we not donate this in your name? That is not the ones who do those things, but the ones who obey the will of the Father. The Bible says, only those who obey the will of the Father will enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible talks about two doors. And if you go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, you have right there Cain. He just killed his brother Abel and he's talking to God and God is telling Cain, look, what you done with your brother? Where is your brother? Sin lie at the door. So that means there is a door that leads to the there is a sin that leads into that door and that there was waiting for you at the door. And if you go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, you have right there Jesus Christ saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear 
my voice and open the door, I will come into him. So we have two doors, one that leads to destruction and the devil, and one that Jesus Christ is knocking at the door, is asking you to stop sinning and to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We establish that there's two doors, one that is broad and wide that leads to destruction, and the other one that's very straight and narrow that leads to heaven. On which door are you going? Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14, wide and broad is the gate that leads to hell, but straight and narrow the gate that leads to heaven. There is the door. Which door are you following? The sinner's guide to hell. If you want to go to hell, this is what you got to do. Number one, deny the existence of God. Bible says the fool has said on his heart there is no God, they're corrupt and they're evil, they're doing evil things. Romans 1.22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools when they deny the existence of God. Even the creation declared his majesty and his glory. The Bible says you want to go to hell, don't believe that hell is even real because many churches have stopped teaching on the doctrine of hell and they're trying to erase hell of the preaching and the pulpits in America. If we have more hell preaching from the pulpits of America, we have less hell on the streets of America today. Amen. But we have a feel good theology today across the pulpits of America. You want to go to hell? My God! But let me remind you, Galatians 6, 7 says, don't be fooled, don't be deceived. God cannot be mad. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping an eye on the wicked and on the good. Proverbs 15. You want to go to hell when somebody talks to you about Christ? When the preacher starts preaching hard, leave the church. Mark at the preacher. Mark at the church people. When they start singing, when they give you a track, when they give an invitation to do something for the Lord, mark them. Lie. You know what? Even better, you want to go to hell? When somebody somewhere on the street preaches of America, call the police and put them in jail because it's disturbing your faith and it's disturbing your sin. Call the police on the preacher. You want to go to hell? Blaspheme the name of God. Believe that the Bible is a fairy tale. Believe there is just an old book. And we have to go with modern science. And we have to go with the politicians tell you in America to go. You want to go to hell? Eat and drink and marry because tomorrow you die. Get drunk. Get high. Have sex with as many women as you can. Ladies, go to the abortion clinic and kill your baby. When you sell a house and you know the toilet is broken, something is wrong with it, raise up the price of the house. When you sell a car, a car and you know the transmission is, is broken and busted, raise up the price of a car. Take advantage of your neighbor. That's how you go to hell. Never consider the poor. Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the unjust men never consider the cost of the poor, but the just is always taking care of the poor. What a beautiful ministry you could have right here. And I don't know what you guys do or don't do. Harmony House is begging for Christians to go over there and deliver the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. A young man was crying up to the Lord this morning. people that can do the work of the Lord. You want to go to hell? Continue getting yourself involved in the affairs of this world. Participating in the garbage, nasty election of the next president. Richard Nixon in 1973, a Republican, he legalized abortion. Obama in 2015, a Democrat, he legalized homosexuality. Both of them are the same trash. And you put him in the office. You are the last the president of America. I will lead you straight to hell because God is a jealous God. Guys, divorce your wives. Beat your wives. Abuse your wives. And remarry again one time, two times, three times. Gamble all your money away in the casinos. That money that belongs to your children. 
la madre de Veloz to pay the rent. Watch all the pornography that you can on the computer, on Facebook, on YouTube. Your sin will be exposed one day. Be a good drunk until you're intoxicated, until you vomit in your, your, your insides out. Drink all the bad ways that you can because in hell there is no water. The rich man was begging for one drop of water. Guys, steal, continue stealing at work. Keep collecting unemployment. Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Act, act like a feminine, dress with those skinny jeans. <laughs> Put your little rings on. Start looking like a filthy salamite. Ladies, dress like a prostitute. Show your flesh. Be a stumbling block for the young men out there. Have multiple boyfriends. Gossiping on Facebook. You too, in the church, talk about the preacher when he's done preaching. Lie to get more child support. Take authority over the husband. If you're pregnant, go to the abortion clinic and kill your baby. But you know what? I'm saving the last for best. How you say it? The best for last. The best for last. Sinners guide the word of hell for church members. Set up a group of guys and call them deacons so they can run the church, so they can tell the pastor what to preach, when to preach, and when not to preach, and what to do in the church. Turn your church over into a business, a non-profit organization, 501c3. I dare anyone in here to show me in the King James Bible where does it say that you have to be a 501c3 organization. This filthy homosexual, they're also non-profit organization. Bible says in Ephesians 5 11, do not take part in unfruitful work of darkness. Instead, expose them and rebuke them. See in this guys to go to hell for church members. Turn your church into an entertainment center. Submit the church to a wicked conference where the bishop is going to tell you what to do, when you can have the church open, and when you have to shut down the churches. Obey the government, because now that you're a 501 one 3 organization, the, church, the government is going to tell you that you have to shut the doors of the church because there's a pandemic out there. And you forget that Jesus Christ saves and Jesus Christ heals. Today, when the pandemic, is when the churches need to be open and we need to lay hands on the sick and say, look, Jesus Christ saves and Jesus Christ heals. Amen. What is the power of God? Of which power are we talking about when we're acting like the world and scared of our own shadow? Pay the government. The government tells you don't fellowship, don't fellowship. The government tells you don't touch each other, don't touch each other. Because you obey the government. You don't obey this book. You don't obey this book. Senior scars for church members to worry. Put a women in leadership. Put a women in leadership. Ladies. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 30. There's a wicked woman right there, Jezebel. And the Bible says that Jezebel is the only one that wears makeup. The only makeup in, makeup in the trash. Do you think Mary, the mother of Jesus, was wearing makeup when the angel of the Lord came to talk to her? Do you think Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was wearing makeup? Which woman in the Bible was wearing makeup? You're going to get old. It is the process of life. God designed it that way. Your hair is going to turn white. You're going to have wrinkles. And it doesn't matter how many pounds of, of makeup you put in your head, you are not going to get rid of the wrinkles. It's the process that God designed. Are you telling God that you're unhappy with the way he made you? Never preach his word. You realize the church for baby showers, for Christmas parties. And forget the lost 
Lordship of America. You know what? You want to go to hell? Just forget the Lordship of Mansfield, Ohio. Just forget the Lordship of Columbus, Ohio. And tell the pastors to pay your shoulder, to pray for you, to pay you, to always be with you. And forget the Lordship of Columbus, Ohio. You should have a burning fire on your soul to go and win the Lordship of Columbus. Go get the Lordship of Columbus at night, at day, when it rains, or when you bring them into the house of God. Take part in the affairs of this world. People is not willing to go to jail for preaching the gospel. But for Donald Trump, they went to jail. They participated in the riots in the capital, and then in jail for the name of Trump. But for the name of Jesus, people don't want to go to jail. I know I'm late, but I got the names of many church members on this banner. And if your name is on this banner, today is the day that you can repent of your sin. If your name is right here, please repent. You're running out of time. You're running out of time. You'll find this on 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 9 and 10, and Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. I'm done. I'm almost done. Second Amendment. Today, I could, uh, this week, a worker came all sad and upset at work because then you hear the news, they're gonna take our guns away. I say, no, I don't watch such garbage. We don't own a gun, and we don't have intentions on owning a gun. Why don't you worry and get upset about the millions of babies that die at the abortion clinic every day? That's something to get upset for. Not because they're trying to take your guns away. <clears throat> Mark 16, verse 15, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Mark 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. That's what the Bible said. And they went forth and they celebrated baby shower. And they went forth and they celebrated Pastor Appreciation Day. And they went forth and they did everything but preaching the gospel. The great commission is to go and preach the gospel. And it's not the job of the pastor. Sheep has to reproduce and bring another sheep. You have to reproduce yourself. You know what a beautiful day will be that the sheriff of this county is calling this church and asking the pastor to stop their members from knocking on the doors and preaching the gospel of Mansfield because they can fulfill Mansfield with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That will be a beautiful day. I want to see brothers coming through the door with black eyes in crutches. And when I ask them, what happened to you, brother? I want to hear I was preaching at the bar and some drugs beat me up. Praise the Lord. Bible says, those who live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. We have this feel good theology. Feel good church in America. That saves nobody. People scared over this stupid so-called pandemic. <clears throat> scared of their own shadows. My father. Almost 30 years in Christianity. Scared. I said, where is the power of the Lord? You should have seen these people in, in West Virginia. The very, very first day they said well, they were, they were going to. Now I'm going to go there. I promise I will go there. But that was the message. Sinners guide to go to hell. Which way are you going to? You're going through the wide and broad gate that leads to destruction, and you're going through the narrow and straight way. You know, that door is very, very small. You cannot go through with beer. You cannot go through with cigarettes. You cannot go through with makeup. You cannot go through dressed like a prostitute. You cannot go through with fornication. It's very narrow. You, you almost have to go through the door like this, sideways, because not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. God bless you. Yes. I will pick up my mess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I took too long. Yeah.